Hello and welcome to another weekly mod showcase. This is Pelorian. The first mod we have here is Fallout Reveal Trailer Main Menu Replacer by Nikatho. Basically, this replaces the main menu with the reveal trailer of Fallout 4. If you want to see the entire trailer, you can go look up Fallout 4 Reveal Trailer on YouTube. It's really good, plays the whole trailer. Um, I'm not playing the music because even though I don't make money on YouTube, I don't want to hit with demonetization. So yeah, but it's got the same music as a trailer. Great intro, great trailer. Personally, I'm probably going to be using this on my list for the intro. I think it fits really good with the theme. It just is really nice. So if you like what you see, go check it out. It's definitely going to be in my lists. Alright, his next mod is Increase Grass by Actor5, A-C-T-R-5. This one just increases the density of the vanilla grass. Um, there is actually a mod that gives you like a higher resolution grass, so that one would probably be cool to add on top of this. It said, the author said, I made this mod because with the conditions they wanted, they didn't exist. It's very simple and a safe mod. It basically only increases the density of vanilla grass. They said, I chose grasses to increase to make it look better. So you have two times for medium, three times for high, four times for ultra, the density of vanilla. So I will be tagging. I'm showing all three here. So ultra, high, then medium. So basically what it doesn't do, it doesn't edit cells, doesn't add grass, doesn't change grass height or scale, density of dead branches, water plants, or pre-war grass. They also recommend increasing the Imen grass size to 20. The default for vanilla is 20, so probably should be there for most people. But yeah, if you want something that's lightweight, more vanilla, just increases the density of the grass depending on your setup, but doesn't actually add any more or make it too overgrown. If you if you like the vanilla look and the vanilla feel, but you just feel that it needs more grass, then hey, try this out. It I think it looks good. I would personally go with ultra if I did it, but that's because my system can handle it. Maybe yours can't. Try medium, try high. But if you like the look, it's definitely... I haven't seen anything like this really before. Usually they add more grass or more plants to it. This one just makes the vanilla more. So I really like it. The closest thing I can think of is Wild Growth by Spifferino. But this is like a step down from that. But still, great mod. I would recommend it. All right, and these next three are all by the same mod author, Half Faces. I did a review of his barrels in the last week's episode. So he has out a wood box replacer here. This one is a custom mesh and HD textures, comes in 2K and 4K options. Looks really nice. The boxes look good. They have a nice weathered dirt feel to them. The metal is nice and shiny with little specks of rust. Personally, I like the little details on it. The Just like with the barrels, the normal mapping is good. I think the thing looks good. I would definitely recommend it because the vanilla ones are just kind of so bland and boring. And right, next one we have here by him is Ancient Pottery. This one also comes in 2K and 4K options, basically custom mesh and HD textures. To me, textures to look way better, textures much better. Um, I do know, I think he said it was supposed to replace the static items and the stuff in the game. I couldn't actually get it to show up on static. I had to actually go in, and it could have been because I installed it mid-game, but I had to go in and actually spawn them in. But maybe they don't install best mid-game, I don't know. And lastly here, we have Kitchen Bar. This one's basically a retexture for the Player House Ruin Kitchen Bar. The only place I can get this to show up, and according to his pictures, it looks like it's the same as basically in the settlement menu to be able to craft it. So, But it has a really nice weathered look because when I was looking at vanilla, it looks almost brand spanking new. So this thing looks much weathered. Looks pretty nice if you like it for settlement ideas. It looks pretty good. Again, this guy, good stuff. Good use of normal maps, adds a nice bump texture, not too much, not too little. Some people don't do enough, some do way too much, and it just looks wrong. He's got a nice balance to his stuff, it's not too shiny. Um, he did mention he fixed the glossiness on the barrels. I haven't checked them out yet, but I trust that it's good. So yeah, so far in these, really good. He has another one that's uh, coffee pots, but not really my taste. But if you like that stuff, go check it out. All right, we have Workshop Highlight Fix by Soul Vault Boy. This changes the workshop object selection from an obscuring shader effect to an outline one, subsequently improving the visibility. 
So there is another mod that does this called Outline Workshop Highlight Only, but the thing with this is it simplifies it by doing it with F4SE and has no plugins. So for me, no plugins is better plugins because that just means another plugin I can put in the game for something else. So you, you reach your cap a little less. So I think it's good. I like it. You can see it does. It works. The first part of the video was the mod. The second part is Vanilla. All right, we have Unique Faces, Walter and Whiplash by RSM000 RSM. The Walden Raiders consist of four members, Bear and Tweez, Walter and Whiplash. While Bear and Tweez have their own unique faces, Walter and Whiplash do not. Instead, they draw from the generic Raider face pool. So this mod remedies it. So now all four gang members have their own unique faces. So I think it's really cool. I did mention the one guy at the beginning looks kind of like he's part of KISS, but still, it looks really good. Um, loving the Unique Faces series, definitely adds a nice touch, so if you like these looks, go ahead and add it. Alright, we have Security Armor Modular Over Armor by Degenerate Dac. This is a new set of modular armor that you can wear over your clothes. It's a very shrimple armor set. Brand new security armor inspired by various police and prison armors. Includes helmet, arms, legs, and vest. It starts spawning at level 8 on the level list and can be found anywhere that you might find vanilla modular armor such as leather or combat armor. Works on male and female characters. Pretty simple. I think it looks good. Something a little different than the vault Tech stuff because it doesn't have vault Tech logo but it's got a nice low level entry security thing. So yeah, if you like the look of it, go check it out. I'll probably be having it in my lists. And right, next here we have Heavy Kevlar Armor Diamond City DC Caravan Guards. This one adds Tom Pajama's heavy Kevlar armor. The Diamond City Guards and Bunker Hill Guards will get heavy Kevlar armor, Dice DC Guards, Danny Sullivan and Deacon's DC Guard Disguise will wear DC Forged armor, and Bunker Hill Caravan Guards will wear the Caravan Forged armor. So Tom Pajama's been coming out with all kinds of good armor lately. Haven't had the time to touch it because it's like so much, but definitely go check his stuff out. This mod uses it and it looks really good. I really like the look of it. Alright, we have Preston Wears Tumba Jumba's Minutemen Ranger Outfit by RSM000 RSM. This swaps out Preston's default outfit with Tumba Jumba's Minutemen Ranger Outfit, the duster version. Disables the outfit's injection into the player's inventory and adds Preston's original vanilla outfit to the radio operator at the castle so you don't actually lose it in the game. So, this thing looks really cool. I have another variant coming up next, but... This one looks really nice. I think it fits really well with the Minutemen theme. Yeah, this next one is actually Tumba Jumba's mod himself. It's Tumba Jumba's Minutemen Martial Outfits. This one is a brand new Minutemen Martial Outfit and he actually includes a replacer for Preston Garvey. So there's like a blue version of this. Preston Garvey gets like a uh, sort of brown outfit but it's got the little fusion cores on the side which are really nice or fusion cells whichever you call them. But yeah, so he actually had a replacer with this one. Looks really good. I mean, I think this one might even fit a little better. All right, we have Minutemen Tumba Jumba Armor Replacer by Dr. Seymour. This one basically replaces the Minutemen outfits with Tumba Jumba's Minutemen Ranger outfit. As you can see in the video, this first version is the Duster version. There are actually two different versions in the downloads. One, the Duster that has like sort of a cape type thing on the back, the Duster. And the other one is just the regular armor, which I will show in the next clip coming up here in a few seconds. Base of this mod is compatible with just about anything that does not alter the original armor records. Or anything that alters Tom Pajama's armor, such as retextures. Or should be compatible with retextures. And any mod that adds more vanilla Miniman is compatible. But if it introduces new factions or alters and replaces Miniman factions, it will need patching. So, so yeah, the first one you saw there with all the women, the Minute women, that was basically the duster version in the optionals. And then this is the just armor version, armor only version. So it's pretty cool if you want to make it like the Miniman a little more organized. It definitely gives a nice look, but doesn't go too overboard in being militaristic like some of the other mods do. All right, so this next one here and the last one is an old one that was recently updated and it may take me a little longer to go through it, but I'm going to try to cover it the best I can while you watch me shoot raiders. So this one is Scourge by Galuxrum. It is an update to his mod, a massive update. It is now a Fallout 4 script extender plugin. It is not usable on the next gen. He will be working on a next gen version 
in the near future, but as of right now, only works on pre-gen, the 1.10.163. So make sure you've downgraded or have an update if you're going to use it. So basically, the original Scourge, it basically balances out enemies more um, from being, from my understanding, from being like bullet sponges by randomizing their health and different things as they go so they're not all the same. And it was adjustable through the MCM. Well, this one apparently takes and cranks it up times 100. So basically, yeah, he said he released the original Scourge back in 2022. And, you know, there's a lot to read. The page is huge, so I'm not going to read. I'm just going to try to highlight some things. So Scourge works by randomizing NPC stats using a normal slash Gaussian distribution curve. Whenever a new NPC spawns, it will have its lists its stats randomized based on values configured through the MCM. This results in all NPCs being different, the way everyone is different in real life. However, it is not completely random, as the average values will be between the provided min and max, with the low and high ends being very rare. Even if you spawned a thousand of the same NPCs, there is a possibility that none of them will be at the very minimum or maximum for some stats. What makes it great is that all of those stats can be edited at any time. So if you encounter a group of NPCs and they were too tough, you are able to adjust their stats in less than a minute. Which is really cool because like some of these raiders and the turrets like were just absolutely like almost unkillable. So I could have gone in and edited it. So yeah, it has a lot of potential. It says uh, yeah, it took off real big. So basically some of the things, features it has. It has a follow for wiki page with info and a page on patching. It's realistic stat randomization that follows real world models that can be seen in height, for example. So apparently, yeah, this mod actually randomizes height of NPCs. So that might have been if you go back and watch the part with the Minute Women, some of them are like varying heights. I'm, th I'm thinking that Scourge. So now you get NPCs of varying height and stuff, which is pretty cool because that's something that I liked for a long time. It is completely configurable through MCM. You can toggle each stat individually, choose whether to recalculate for the NPC, freely configuring min and max sliders for the best possible stats, brand new bias slider to choose the average value. NPCs now can be made stronger or weaker than average global multipliers, global resets, and a reset button to reset everything back to default. Some of the major stats you're able to, that it supports that you're able to adjust is damage resistance, electric resistance, energy resistance, fire resistance, frost and cryo resistance, health, poison resistance, radiation exposure resistance, the range damage, the speed multiplier, and the unarmed damage. So a lot of stuff you can really adjust. The ability to create partial value sets that can then be placed on top of full sets to create custom combinations. Minimal requirements, no manual editing, load order does not matter as long as Scourge ESP is loaded before any patch is made. Papyrus utilities to allow mod authors to reset NPCs or global variables. Making patches has never been more easy or intuitive. And actually if you go punch in Scourge and then sort by date released and look at everything that came after scourge first came out there's a good amount of patches already out and there's probably going to be a ton more so there might be some stuff for a lot of the things you like so i definitely go check it out and if you find some that isn't maybe go try to learn how to patch it, it doesn't sound like it's hard um yeah patching supports both editor ids and form ids for convenience there's no limits on how large a patch can be Filters, which are set of conditions upon which recalculations are applied, allow to filter NPCs based on multiple conditions, including NPC forms, race, faction, keyword, gender. A powerful logger tells you everything you need to know. Custom actor values, actor value multipliers. You can now easily create boss creatures that use the same value pool as others, but get a percentage multiplier for their stats. And upcoming features is the influence system, which will make a return with huge improvements. No longer be limited to health and speed mall only. Um, they're still working on some issues with that, so currently not in there, but upcoming. And more intricate con controls over global variance behavior. So, yeah, highly, highly customizable. Very, some people relate it almost to more RPG-like, but yeah, really cool. I like that if some enemy is too tough, you can go in and just tweak you can just tweak it so that it basically does what you want, makes it a little bit easier. She can actually adjust to a degree the difficulty. I think that's really cool. 
Uh, mandatory requirements is Fallout 4 script extender, the address library, and scaling flag remover because due to the way that Bethesda made the NPC scale to the player's level during gameplay, as in when you level up, there can be cases where all such NPCs will recalculate their stats and reset the changes made to them by Scourge. Other than the inconvenience being fixed, there won't be any other changes in gameplay because NPC levels do not matter anymore, so NPC scaling serves no purpose. So yeah, um, optional requirements, but definitely really good. Um, they're not necessary to function, however they will severely hinder. You should get MCM. You should get MCM booster as it will lag. And yes, when I first booted up MCM with this, even with MCM booster, it took a minute. So if it looks like it froze when you first launch MCM with Scourge, don't panic. It's not frozen. It's just, it Scourge is big and it takes a minute to boot in. So don't worry about that. Um, they also recommend MCM Categorizer, MCM Setting Manager, and Better Console F4SE. So I recommend those two. They're usually always in all my lists. Compatibility. There's uh, a few incom incompatibility. NPC use items. I believe somebody might have made a patch, though I don't know exactly how if it works yet or not. But yeah, and Direct Hit is partially incompatible due to a bug found in his mod. Um... Rob Patcher has a setting in its any file called I enable recalculate stats with save load. So you will have to go in and disable that. Basically turn the one to a zero. It's not hard. In fact, if you try to launch the game and you haven't changed it, it'll shut the game down until you've changed it. And then if you don't have scaling flag remover, it will also come up with a thing and shut the game down until you install it. So that's kind of cool. So yeah, they got that. Some of the recommended mods he recommends with it is True Damage to help balance out the damage since, you know, your characters basically... Or there's probably a few other ones. Dax Damage thing might work. Some of them that are tweaks of True Damage. Basically something that changes the damage level since you're kind of coming against, in a sense, unleveled NPCs to a degree. Um, he also recommends his Unleveled World F4SE. says, unless your Scourge patches make different variants of the same NPCs have varying stats, and there's no reason not to unlevel characters. If you want to also unlevel items, then that's also possible in the way that he plays. So yeah, you can get Unleveled World and just unlevel the NPCs, but not unlevel the items so that, you know, guns and armor and that still progress as you level up to where certain ones are connected to the level list but maybe the NPCs are unleveled, so you might be like level 1 and running across like a level 10 um, bloat fly. Like, I think when I messed with it one time, I ran across like a level a level 15 irradiated bloat fly. And it kind of makes sense, because in real life, you're not always going to run across people that are exactly the same as you. So, um, Permadeath, that's one of his mods. I don't recommend it, but <laughs> it's a good one if you like that. Basically, when you die, you're dead. There is no coming back. And it kind of writes a little obituary about your character. And it, you can have it save some of the stuff, but it's kind of funny. Um, MAME, if you like MAME, there is a MAME 3 beta on the MAME Discord. If you happen to be able to get there, maybe go to MAME. They might have a link for it. Um, it's supposed to be coming out sometime in the future. I have no idea when. I don't really play with MAME. It's a little too difficult for my style. Uh, Bastion says some NPCs like Deathclaws are very strong and will kill most things with ease. So probably best to have Bastion to tank yourself up a bit. And Direct Hit. So that's not bad. And some of his other mods that he has. So yeah, basically, that's pretty much about it. I mean, there's a lot on there. I would definitely go read it. It's The reason I'm covering it, even though it's an older mod, is just because of the fact that it got such a massive update that I, I feel it deserves the coverage. Um, I probably did it a bit of an injustice and not covering it well enough but i'm still early into playing with it i only played with scourge a little bit in the past so i'm still new to it but it looks amazing it sounds amazing i'm excited that it's here so uh yeah if you like the idea of this the sounds of it go check it out try it out um if you haven't heard of scourge which most people probably have then yeah go check it out so on that note i hope you guys enjoyed this week's showcase it was a bit to put together but um yeah so it was fun, though. There's a lot of good stuff coming out lately, so it's good to see some good quality mods coming back since all this happened. So I will talk to you guys later. This is Pelorian checking out. Until next time, be safe and take care.